hour prior to your training, you've been well fed. Uh, that if appropriate, maybe you consume some carbs or protein during training, that once that session is over, you eat within a reasonable window of time after you train. That is the single most important. It's not about some novel nutrient or some arginine ingredient that's going to boost your, your fucking nitric oxide. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. I'm your host, Evan Centipani. Always appreciate you guys joining us and certainly appreciate uh, all the questions you send for us um, because it's always helpful. We always want to know, what do you want to know from us, right? What do you want us to talk about? We're here and we're here for you. Might as well make it count. Don't be shy. Always feel free to let it rip. You guys have been doing just that because I got quite a few questions and there's some good ones. Let's just dive in. First question, what do you think about the use of pre-workouts? How about the use of carbs, proteins, etc. during training? So it's a good question. I guess if we start at the beginning, now when I first got into training, right, pre-workouts were not a thing. The first pre-workout product that I can recall was Ultimate Orange. Right, it was a, I believe it was developed by Dan Duchesne. <laughs> oh man, that's going back, huh? It was a blend of basically like caffeine, maybe a mahuang or guarana or one of those, uh, maybe caffeine, ephedrine, and some protein. I think a serving had maybe like 16 or 17 grams of protein, just some stimulants basically. It was made to use, take it pre-training and go on your way and have an improved workout. I remember kids having it in you know senior year of high school. You know, I was just never a big stim fan. My goal was always to get big. I always felt that the use of stimulants would curb my appetite. And I never really liked the jittery feeling and I remember using Ripped Fuel one time. And dude, Ripped Fuel back in the day, all those products, you know, like Xenadrin, Hydroxycut, Ripped Fuel, that shit worked, all right? Back when it was a caffeine, ephedrine, they wouldn't use aspirin, but they would use white willow bark as an aspirin equivalent. Basically, it was all based around the ECA stack, ephedrine, caffeine, aspirin. Those products really, really worked. So at the time, I mean, I started off my whole journey just wanting to lose weight, right, and get in shape. I was on my way up, like I was, I was starting to train with weights, and I put on some muscle, but I was still like running and you know trying to stay lean, very, very afraid to get fat. And I remember being out for a run. I remember I was using ripped fuel. I remember it definitely screwing up my endurance because you know your heart's beating faster. So when it came to running any significant distance it kind of would screw with that, right? It wasn't helping you in that regard. But I remember coming home from a run, laying in bed, and my legs literally being on fire. Like you could feel the heat coming off of them. The thermogenesis was crazy. <laughs> but of course, so was the insomnia. And I would just lay in bed awake, lay in bed awake, could not sleep. And that shit was just not for me. Didn't appeal to me. As time went on, I remember training with a guy. He was older than I was. He was a professional wrestler. You know, he knew a lot of people that I did, and I'm just, I'm just a kid, right? I'm in my early 20s. He knew people I didn't. He knew pro bodybuilders, trainers, so on and so forth. He started dabbling with the use of growth hormone and insulin. And now this, this was, you know, this was kind of like when insulin just became kind of popular, right? It wasn't, the use of it wasn't widespread. The formula, let's call it, <laughs> was for every one IU of insulin, and back then it was really just Humil and R. Uh, now people get their hands on all different stuff, Humilog, Novolog, blah, 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 a lot of shorter acting insulins. But back then, Humil and R was the only one you could walk into a pharmacy and actually ask for over the counter, and I believe you still can, without a prescription, and they gotta give it to you. And for every one IU of Humulin R, you would use 10 grams of carbohydrates. My buddy was told that the way to administer insulin was 20 to 25 minutes prior to the end of your workout, you take, you know, whether it was six, eight, 10 IUs of Humulin R, and begin sipping a carb drink. And back then, it was ultra fuel. Now you guys, probably most of you watching this don't remember it, but Twin Lab made a carb drink called Ultra Fuel. They came pre-made. They came in these little glass bottles. It was 100 grams of carbs in there. It was pretty much all from maltodextrin. Uh, later on, they switched to a plastic bottle and the taste was different. His go-to, he would go and he'd grab a bottle of Ultra Fuel, 
25 or so minutes prior to the end of his workout, go in the locker room, slam the insulin, start sipping the ultra fuel. And that, I guess, was my very first introduction to the use of an intro workout. <laughs> I was never a huge fan of insulin. I tried it uh, and I would get a crazy pump and I would get a lot stronger and I would feel it for like a week and then it would just like rapidly diminish and I would just start getting fat. To be totally fair, there's probably a lot to know about insulin use that I just didn't know and still don't know. And I don't know if I really even care to know it. I would I followed that same protocol several times where I would use uh, you know a carb drink during training uh, with the insulin. I remember going through the years and there was a product containing, per serving, it was like 60 grams of carbs and around 20 grams or so of hydrolyzed whey. In the year that I was using it, I'm not saying it's because of the product, I got fucking enormous and my recovery was through the roof. Every time I would, in the future, would add that product back in to my intro workout, my recovery was always better. Do I believe that the use of nutrients during training can have an effect on recovery? 1000%. That was the feeling uh, and belief of the late, great John Meadows. Uh, he was all about intra workout, uh, or I guess as he would call it, peri workout, which could mean you know pre, during, and post training nutrition, uh, basically surrounding your uh, training session with the appropriate nutrients. I could tell you I like going into a training session well fed. I probably had a whole food meal no more than an hour before training, uh, sometimes even closer, right? I don't have a problem eating a half an hour before I work out and then going and having a workout. Uh, I like going into a workout with nutrients. And if I'm trying to get as big as I can and I'm trying to boost recovery, I will absolutely include carbs and protein during training. And if I had to pick which one's the most important, I would say the carbs. You know, it doesn't have to be a crazy amount, 30, maybe 30 to 50 grams of carbs. You know, cluster dextrin was all the rage for a minute uh, because it would supposedly leave the stomach rapidly. I thought cluster dextrin was a good carb, but I think the ideal setup is, you know, maybe 20 grams of cluster dextrin and then another 20 grams of just good old dextrose. Uh, I always had good luck with that combo. I'm not a pre-workout fan. Right? I'm not into a pre-workout, meaning like a caffeine type pre-workout. Uh, there's times that I would use them uh, because I needed to pick me up. In terms of the use of them chronically, get myself jacked up on stims every day of the week before my training session? No. Uh, and I think if you need to do that, either something needs to be addressed. To be fair, there's some people, you know, and they're working multiple jobs. They're not always getting the, num the number of hours of sleep they need, and they need a little boost. All right? If, if that's your situation, I don't want to say it's permissible because you still don't want to be using that shit every day. It's still no good used chronically. The effects of it diminish rapidly. You just become dependent on it. I think even if you're someone who actually needs, now when I say need, I mean you need that boost a couple days a week. All right, two, three days a week at max. Otherwise, if you feel you need that stuff, you're just being a pussy. You do not need a pre-workout. I understand there's different types of pre-workouts now. Some, you know, designed to improve the pump, all that stuff. And that's all good, okay? That's all fine and good. But you have to keep in mind the most important thing around your workout is being sure that in the 24 hours prior to that workout, you've been adequately fed. Hour prior to your training, you've been well fed. Uh, that if appropriate, maybe you consume some carbs or protein during training, that once that session is over, you eat within a reasonable window of time after you train. That is the single most important. It's not about some novel nutrient or some arginine ingredient that's going to boost your, your fucking nitric oxide. That stuff's all cool. All right, that's all fine, but it takes the ba a backseat to basically good nutrition, okay? Because that is what is going to make the difference. That's where it's at. People look for magic. There is no magic. Uh, you got to eat in a timely fashion, day in and day out. When your body is routinely and consistently supplied with nutrients, that's when you're going to be in the ultimate position to achieve your goals. That's it for that. And uh, as always, I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you soon.